Yo, I think I just found a PSYOP from China and actually kind of Russia too. What if I told you the world is slowly shifting away from the dollar? Total Energies was willing to accept renminbi for their LNG trading. Selling oil in Chinese renminbi. To begin accepting yuan as payment for oil. China and Brazil have just struck a deal Ditch the U.S. dollar. Countries around the world will seek to break away from dollar hegemony. China's won. The U.S. dollar is is failing and China is maybe going to become the new reserve currency. There could soon be a new replacement for the U.S. dollar. Of course, it's the U.S. dollar. The petrodollar is uh, disintegrating. Using their own currencies instead of the U.S. dollar. The only reason the U.S. can use sanctions as a weapon is because the U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency. Using unnecessary sanctions and weaponizing the U.S. dollar. But more recently, it's been weaponized by the West. For years, the United States has been weaponizing the dollar. You know, the U.S. is trying to use the U.S. dollar uh, as a weapon, you know, to weaponize it against, you know, any adversary. To ditch the U.S. dollar. De-dollarization. 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 De-dollarizing. De-dollarization. The so-called de-dollarization. De-dollarization. This is a word I have been absolutely inundated with for over a year now. What the hell is all this de-dollarization stuff? Now that's just a tiny little portion of all the channels that were covering this idea of de-dollarization. And I'm not saying that any of these people were paid by the Chinese government or whatever. All I'm saying is that I think I found the genesis of where this whole concept came from. And sometimes the Chinese government is so successful in pushing a narrative or pushing an idea that it actually spreads across the internet and becomes a popular topic to cover. And that's what I think is happening here. De-dollarization is the idea that the world will stop using the dollar as the default currency. And in the process, they'll start using the Chinese yuan instead. If that was the case, the world would change as we know it. The US would lose global supremacy in many ways, and the entire world economy could not only be changed, but could fall into the hands of China. A new world order, so to speak. It would truly be wild and really bad for the West in general if the dollar all of a sudden stopped being the currency that people traded in internationally. Honestly, with the amount of videos, and videos with big views I might add, and articles as well as people sharing out information about this world-changing trend, this de-dollarization, the end of the US dollar, I'll be honest with you, I started to think that it was a thing too. I'm not even joking, I'm not like an economics major or anything, so when you hear something over and over again, you start to believe it. However, something smelt fishy. Really, really fishy. And when I think something smells fishy, I look into it. I've exposed the Chinese government on so many different things, and I figured that this might be one of those things. After digging around and analyzing Chinese and a little bit of Russian media influence as well, and then I fact-checked with three industry experts on the matter, and I found out that China is full of shit. It's paying and incentivizing influencers to go around and make videos and content about how the US dollar just died and how the Chinese yuan just took over. It's absolute nonsense. But hey, if a China watcher like me who lived in China for 10 years and is very critical of the Chinese government started to fall for it, then I would hazard a guess that a lot of you guys did too. And even if you didn't, stick along for the ride because I'll break down where this PSYOP meant to target you is coming from. So there I was, checking my YouTube feed, scrolling around, wasting my life. I started to see things like this. No more dollar. Banking crisis, de-dollarization, the US weaponizing dollar trigger de-dollarization. It's over. China just broke the US dollar. They don't want you to know about de-dollarization. The process of de-dollarization is underway. De-dollarization is inevitable. When you start seeing these things, it gets into your head. But I notice a trend. Save for some videos, I'll admit there were some completely unrelated to the Chinese government. I immediately recognized that many of these turned out to be pro CCP accounts. So accounts that are basically paid or incentivized to promote the narrative of the Chinese government in English on Western platforms like YouTube. Many of which work directly with the Chinese state media. 
as well as people affiliated with Russia. Well, that was an easy thread to pull. A quick search and yeah, not only did I find that it was a predominantly covered topic by the Chinese government shills, but also it was directly from Chinese state media. Look at the sheer amount of articles and content they've been slinging around about this de-dollarization thing. Not only is it in Chinese state media in English, but it's also in Chinese. This whole de-dollarization thing is called Mei Yuan Hua, and there's no shortage of Chinese state media coverage about it. So obviously, this de-dollarization propaganda is something that the Chinese government is trying to spread out there. The dollar is dead! Get ready for your new Chinese overlords, but it's also domestically in China too. I personally know many people in China that have now been converting their stashes of US dollars into Chinese RMB because the government's told them that the dollar is dead. For God's sakes, they don't even hide it. Look at these two separate creators. One's American, one's British. They use the same gosh darn pictures for their thumbnails on the same topic seven months apart. I'm not surprised though. The Chinese government, when they wanna push a certain narrative, they hire third party companies, usually out of Hong Kong, and sometimes even in the US, to contact here, YouTubers in America or in different countries and other media personalities to read a certain script or cover certain key points of Chinese propaganda. We saw it with the COVID origin propaganda coming from the Chinese government. And we saw it when they tried to whitewash the lockdowns happening across the country by showing beautiful vistas. Look at how amazing and free Chinese people are. And meanwhile, everyone's locked down. We've seen it when they try to deny genocide in Western China. They'll actually hire people from America or England or South Africa to go around Xinjiang and say, look, there's no genocide here. Look, just people walking around the city. By the way, that genocide is currently ongoing. Look into it. We saw it when they tried to take down politically unpalatable influencers and a host of other topics. You know how I know that? Well, I should know. Because those idiots in the Chinese government tried to hire me to do the same thing. Now you'd think that after looking at my channel really quick, and if you're new here, just go look at my channel real quick, you'd probably want to steer clear of trying to pay me to spread Chinese propaganda. I think I've proven time and time again now that I cannot be bought and make videos about how the Chinese government in its current state is the greatest threat that the world has ever faced. I make that abundantly clear. But that's how sloppy China is. Because after the Chinese government puts out a memo to these third party companies, they go out there without doing many background checks or due diligence on the influencer and they screw up. I've gotten multiple Chinese government propaganda companies to play along right to the very end. They actually offered me about $2,000 to spread certain messages. And it starts to make sense why you'd start seeing certain topics starting to fill your screen. China has a multi-billion dollar budget for this, and they do it with topics that they think are important. And what is the topic of the day? Well, it's de-dollarization. So this de-dollarization thing looks at least partially like a Chinese PSYOP. Russia seems in on it too. It was all over Russian today. But the more important question is, is it true? Did the world de-dollarize? That's probably what you want to know, right? Well, this is where I had to get experts in on it. With China's propaganda and headlines, you'd probably think that the US economy is absolutely screwed. You'd think that China just took over the world. You'd think that Americans were poor. Hold up, let's check the per person GDP real quick. $80,000 per year for America and $13,000 a year for China. Now I get that this has nothing to do with de-dollarization. I just like to throw in some perspective here. Anyway. Different topic. Did the world stop using the dollar? I mean, Francis used the Chinese yuan to do some shenanigans. Brazil just signed on with China for some more Belt and Road Initiative stuff, or as I like to call it, the Bait and Rob Initiative. China's Belt and Road Initiative, by the way, it's the idea that China can just build stuff in your country and then you owe them. It's largely been a failure thus far and many countries are actually regretting their decision to join China on this Belt and Road Initiative. And having one more sucker like Brazil recently joined the big fiesta of regret hardly makes the world less dollar friendly. What have I even told you that Saudi Arabia's new deal with China snubbing the US barely had any effect on dollar supremacy? Now, there is no de-dollarization and then replacing it with the Chinese yuan. After I learned all about this, after speaking to industry experts, I just realized how unbelievably unrealistic it is to even think that the Chinese yuan will be anything other than paper. 
The truth is, the Chinese Yuan is just 2% of the world's global currency trade. For God's sakes, the Australian dollar. From Australia, a country with 25 million people, has a bigger global currency trade share than a country of 1.4 billion people, China. But let's look more closely at foreign exchange. The idea is that when you have business between two countries, you need a currency to use as a middleman. You can't just trade in some obscure currency. No one is gonna be able to accept a Vietnamese dong without converting it to a more globally recognized currency like the US dollar. Since even before 1989, the US dollar has been involved in between 85 and 90% of foreign exchange transactions. After reading the headlines from China and watching all these videos, I would expect the latest figures to be dismal. I would expect to go and check that the current foreign exchange transactions, I would expect that the US dollar has fallen from 85% to like 10%, right? The Chinese Yuan will reign supreme. Uh, no. The US dollar, as of the latest study in 2022, is involved in 88% of foreign exchange transactions. That's higher than some of the figures in the past 30 years. So where's the de-dollarization? Looks more like re-dollarization to me. Just kidding, obviously. But anyway, here's what one industry expert said. Most foreign exchange happen in a few freely convertible currencies. US dollar, Euro, Great British Pound. You got the Japanese yen, you got the Swiss franc, you know, all these kind of currencies. However, even among those, not all pairs are active. So most foreign currency exchange goes through the most liquid currency, and that's the US dollar. Let's come up with an example here. Let's say that Pu wants to buy some honey in Chinese yuan. The seller will convert the USD honey price into Chinese yuan. And then Pu will give over his Chinese yuan to get the honey. And then the seller will convert the Chinese yuan to their currency. For most currencies, the Chinese yuan will get converted into USD and then into the seller's desired currency. It was still traded in US dollars. Technically, Pu traded in Chinese yuan, but the only trivial difference is that Pu got quoted a price in Chinese yuan. Now, could this trade just avoid the US dollar step? Well, sure, but it would be much more expensive, just like you'd pay more to fly directly between two small cities. So why does the US make oil get traded in the US dollar? So a big Chinese government talking point is this whole oil being traded in the US dollar thing. Why do countries trade oil in the US dollar? The US doesn't make the trade happen in the US dollar. The US as a policy doesn't give a damn what currency trade happens in. However, the US is a big, rich economy, so a lot of trade naturally happens in the US dollar. A lot of trade used to be in Great British Pounds before the British Empire shrank. The US dollar is also a stable currency, which is another reason that people quote prices in US dollars. Finally, you get most of the competition if prices are easily comparable, so everyone quotes and trades in USD. There's nothing more mysterious than just wanting lots of comparable prices to spur competition. Often tied up in this is the idea that trade happening in the US dollar allows the US to control trade. However, the US doesn't have any position on its exchange rates, nor is there any way that the US can control trade by people using the US dollar. It's not like the US is gonna wait for China to be exposed to the exchange rate and then change the rate to hurt China. So yeah, who can buy oil or honey in Chinese yuan, but it's just the seller converting the US dollar price to Chinese yuan. Congrats, Pooh Bear, what a win. But China has been absolutely obsessed with getting countries to trade in the yuan. However, the irony is that many contract specifications do calculations in the US dollar. And the exchange says that they accept US dollars as well as Chinese yuan. So Chinese yuan trading isn't really some mandated change. It might help local people, but these contracts aren't actually dethroning King Dollar in international trade. Another piece of this propaganda puzzle is that China keeps claiming from all this oil side of things that the Chinese government claims that Shanghai crude oil is the new global benchmark, even though the spec is actually the same as Omani crude oil. Omani crude, incidentally, trades in Dubai, in US dollars, 
and is already the global benchmark. They also admit that they couldn't use domestically extracted crude because China mostly relies on imported oil. Same goes for most Shanghai futures exchange contracts. There are largely copies of contracts which trade elsewhere in US dollars. Though sometimes they're scaled down so that they look like they trade more. But it's not just about oil. People trade metals like copper on the London Metal Exchange or the LME and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Each have higher open interest, which measures how much people have locked in prices to protect against changes. Nickel also trades more on the LME, even after a big Chinese customer made the LME halt trading and bail him out of big losses, while the Shanghai futures exchanges kept trading their nickel contract. I'm sure the LME being owned by Hong Kong exchanges has nothing to do with the funny business making the Shanghai nickel contract look better. Because Hong Kong is independent, am I right? And the Shanghai exchange even still cannot beat the US dollar dominated contract on the LME, even after all of that. To make it simple, China hasn't ousted the US dollar on metal exchanges either. Oh, but food, soybeans are what people keep bringing up. The world will trade soybeans, an incredibly important commodity in Chinese yuan. Nope. The Dalian Commodity Exchange trades them in Chinese yuan at a smaller size, but they are dwarfed by trading in US dollar at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. How about cotton, which trades on the Zhengzhou Commodity Exchange in Chinese yuan at a smaller scale and is barely keeping up with trade on the intercontinental exchange in US dollars. Maybe the only exception to this is the Shanghai Futures Exchange in steel rebar contract, which has a very liquid market in trading in the Chinese yuan. Well, China pours a lot of crappy concrete. I mean, they did. So this makes a hell of a lot of sense. Maybe less going forward though, after the COVID lockdowns and this absolutely insane city-sized COVID capsule cities that they literally retired halfway through building. You know, these shuttered factories and protest crackdowns and wolf warrior diplomacy. They made a lot of businesses reconsider if China was actually the stable partner that they wanted. And there's always something you have to keep in mind. Big Western businesses are realizing that China isn't a safe trading partner. Business will move away from China over time, not increase. So I guess China can claim victory on trading the most steel rebar in Chinese yuan. whoop de frickin do Don't even get me started on all those warehouse receipt scandals in Qingdao and Peng Lai. People got multiple loans backed by the same stocks of metal. Yet even more reasons that the world isn't rushing to trade Chinese exchanges or in Chinese yuan. A recent report shows that Russia deeply regrets this whole Chinese partnership thing because it was happy to take on the Chinese yuan in the beginning, but is now realizing that it prefers euros or dollars because they can actually use them. We could go on and on and on. It's not that de-dollarization is completely false. There might be a big future in Bitcoin or crypto in general. And things on the world stage may shift over time. But I'll tell you what. This whole US is collapsing and the world stopping using the dollar overnight and replacing it with the Chinese yuan, that's not happening. Carrick Ryan said it well. Despite the Chinese economy being the second largest in the world by GDP, the yuan makes up only 2.6% of global currency trade. Why? Because markets rely on trust. Trust that property rights will be protected. Trust that leaders are accountable. Trust that government policy is transparent. And trust that you won't be forced to sell your company when it gets too successful. Or worse, you're just arrested for becoming too powerful yourself. That is why the market trusts currencies of democracies and always will. If China wants to genuinely challenge the US dollar's hegemony, it will need to drastically liberalize, not just the economy, but the government. And for Xi, that would mean relinquishing his power. This is not gonna happen. Anyway, most of what you see out there about this de-dollarization thing comes from a Chinese PSYOP. Psychological operations are operations to convey selected information and indicators to audiences to influence their emotions, motives, and objective reasoning. And ultimately, the behavior of governments, organizations, groups, and individuals. In other words, it's a propaganda campaign. It's kind of like, if you say something enough, it kind of makes it true, right? 
It's like in school, when you feel left out because people keep talking about a song or a toy or a movie or a video game or something that you don't know much about. You hear about de-dollarization passively, hundreds if not thousands of times, and you end up just parroting or tacitly believing Chinese propaganda. China has a narrative to push, and they're pushing it successfully. It's sad that we have to live in a world where a country like China that blocks its entire populace from any and all media like Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or WhatsApp, name it, it's blocked. All the while, the Chinese state takes advantage of the free and open media platforms of the US and the larger world to push, twist, divide, and control a narrative for its own political gain. And that's not right. Look into the motivation of a certain narrative. Why might people be saying something? Look for state-sponsored labels. Google trends to see who and what people are saying what. Inform yourself as to why they might be saying that. But all in all, the quicker that people realize that China isn't the future, the quicker all this madness can stop. If you guys wanna see a live show where we talk about all of the current things that are happening in China, I highly recommend you go over to my live show every Friday. It's called The China Show. It's everything that's happening in China as it's happening with explanations from a guy that lived in China for 10 years and his friend that lived in China for 14 years. We analyze the news and tell you all the stuff that China's trying to cover up as well. Also, don't forget, if you go over to our collective patron for The China Show, we have a secret show. It's called Xia Ban Ho. It's all the stuff we can't talk about on YouTube, if you catch my drift. I highly recommend you guys check out both. I really appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the next video.